Haley Deegan, 19 year old superstar. How, how's it going? How are you doing? It's going good, really good. My birthday's coming up. I'm gonna be 20 soon in a few days. <laughs> no I more saw teens. That. Yeah, I was doing a little research, a little bit more research on you, and uh, saw the birthdays coming up. And I was thinking about how much of a shame it is that you know if things go well on Sunday or Saturday night in Nashville, you won't even be able to celebrate because you're still only turning 20. You can't go hit Broadway or anything. <laughs> no, no, not not that old yet. <laughs> I got to know, though, are you a birthday cake like the classic cookie cake or ice cream cake? Which ice one? cream cake. No way. Love wow. ice cream. That's my weakness. Okay. Where would I'm you actually, I'm actually on a new trend right now. Um, I went vegan a week ago. I don't know how long it's going to last, but I'm trying it. <laughs> Which one is that again? It's not. Meat. I know it's not vegetarian. No meat, no dairy. No meat, no dairy. Okay. Anything that comes from animals, no, none of that. Well, wouldn't that be vegetarian? No, okay. because of the um, the dairy part makes it vegan. Ah, okay, you could still do that. All right, so what's the? You said it's not going to last very long. What's the? What are you missing <laughs> the? What are you missing the most that you're vegan? What's your thing that you're like, golly, I need that. Eggs and chicken. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It makes sense. Kind of the simple stuff. <laughs> Pretty much every single day Ooh, it's really the protein shakes because like i i work out a lot like i tend to drink a lot of protein shakes well i can't really do that anymore i feel like the vegan ones <laughs> oh man i feel like i feel like protein shakes as is don't taste that great and then if they're vegan it just is even worse if they're very chalky when they're vegan <laughs> yikes okay yeah. well all right so um how well, you just like you 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 wanted to try to get healthier look cleaner on the vegan or what what, what was the i saw a tiktok that said i would live longer if i was vegan <laughs> <laughs> so it's on tiktok so it's got to be yeah. true right well i looked it up after tiktok so <laughs> okay got it so now you're like completely your your for you page is just completely like uh, completely vegan. Fitness. yeah <laughs> Now with TikTok, are you big like uh, I? I don't think I followed you on there yet. So what's your what's your kind of content that you throw up on TikTok? Are you doing the dances? What are you? No, doing? no, you won't really find me dancing. Maybe in a video or two, just messing around. But I'm not good at dancing. I'd say TikTok is mostly I'd say it's pretty car based. Usually shows a lot of my personality, like what I think's funny. Yeah. But what I think's funny is maybe not what everyone else thinks funny. But <laughs> what do you think is funny? What's your, what's your, what's your humor? I don't know. I'm more like a fail person, like, like watching fails and different things like that and seeing things go wrong. Like, I, I think that stuff's funny. So Obviously, like, I don't want people to get hurt, but. <laughs> so like pranks or just like kind of like the movie Jackass, like that kind of stuff? Definitely like Jackass. <laughs> okay. Have you seen yeah. all the, uh, have you seen all of them? <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> Did you know, oh, I just kind of found this out, but like apparently the Jackass 4 preview is out there. Have you seen it? It is. I haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it either, but uh, apparently it's happening. They're getting the gang back together, and um, so I feel you there. But then, like, with your background, I mean, with who your dad is, like, you kind of – that's just kind of in your blood. Yeah, like, I kind of, like, I was around all those guys. <laughs> that's the funny part. Like, I was just kind of like – because my dad, back when he – his kidney exploded when he crashed, he was on Viva La Bam. And so, like, he was with Bam and all them. <laughs> I that that show was my childhood like when mm -hmm. I was like in middle school and everything and then you know you were obviously just a baby probably around then but that was Viva La Bam all mm -hmm. day every day that his uncle yeah. Vito, rest in peace I think he mm -hmm. passed away but his uncle yeah. Vito, hilarious man that's, mm -hmm. uh, that show was really good really funny did you ever watch Wild Boys no, I did not. I was like, I liked um, Rod, Rob Deerdeck's Fantasy Factory, Ridiculousness, stuff that was a little bit more like towards my era. Cause like I am only 19. So like I was kind of like on the outs of MTV. That is, yeah, God. All right. See <laughs> Not trying to make you feel old by any means. <laughs> no, I have a, my, so my youngest sister, she also just turned 19. So she's, <laughs> you know, right. I, 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 I'm not too out of touch with that, you know, age group with you guys, you know, but um, all right. How you, so how, how are you like an SRX? It seems like you're having a blast. I love it. It's so much fun. I feel like the hospitality is honestly, it's probably one of the best things out there. Just like 
different things like they just are fully catered to the drivers and it's awesome like I was racing at Knoxville in the truck series race and I told them I was like hey I'm not gonna be able to make practice in the morning there's no flight that gets there in time because I was just gonna like fly like American Airlines or something there yeah. and so they're like oh don't worry about it we'll we'll get you a jet down there and I was like huh <laughs> oh, wow. and they had, a, they had like a jet waiting for me at Knoxville airport so I took my rental car drove to the jet and flew over to Wisconsin it was crazy I the hospitality is like a totally different level especially like for what I'm kind of used to and like I, I usually am that person who books like all through those sketchy websites to get like flights and stuff and you end up like maybe sitting next to a toilet <laughs> <laughs> right yeah the one little propeller plane that you're like I don't know if I'm gonna get there yeah and that's just like I don't know I just I don't live very bougie I guess I look pretty simple. <laughs> Are you still in that word? Are we still? We're yeah, still I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't live very, I guess, like, I, I live expensive when it comes to, to what I do, like the vehicles I'm in and like the stuff I'm racing, but like actually like living lifestyle, like not very bougie. Okay. What was the, what was the last thing that you kind of splurged on? that you that you spent whether it was you know maybe for a birthday your birthday's coming up you know what, what was the last thing that you were like yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna you know take a hit in the wallet for this one but I'm doing it. I well I don't ever buy things I'm not a material person like I buy I like buying experiences ah. and that's like I like I want to so for my birthday I was like you know what I haven't been on vacation in a really long time I'm always it's work 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 24 7 like get up work go sleep work it's just like constantly like that so I was like you know what I want to go travel like I want to go see the world and so I booked me and my boyfriend <laughs> we booked two two tickets to Jamaica <laughs> for a week nice so do that for my birthday yeah awesome that'll be a great time mm -hmm. I'm never not... been to Jamaica have no clue what to expect but <laughs> I just like, great you weather. know Jamaica <laughs> like great weather some some bob marley i don't know it's my limited oh, bob sledding. so <clears throat> going to jamaica where where else do you want to, you want to you know travel the world what's the other spot that you're like man i really that's my that's a that's a bucket list location i want to travel to uh i really want to go to like bali um i feel like that would be really cool costa rica like those places like puerto rico like different i, I just want to travel like i want to go see the world yeah all right good deal any like europe like uh not like, a huge europe know. person i know like i feel like there's two types of people either there's the people who like going to like the jungle beaches and there's people that like going to like europe and like sightseeing okay. i'm more like the jungle beach like i want to go on like adventures i want to go zip lining through a forest and like <laughs> that type of stuff <laughs> that's an adventure yeah and it's uh on your youtube channel you can subscribe Haley deegan on <laughs> uh nice yeah we'll, we'll plug there but i was i was checking out some of that and you do like adventures you're yeah you're doing, you know bikes and and, and jeeps and all these pray you're doing stuff all the time so always yeah the in the head with that um all right so nashville you ever been to nashville no i haven't oh first time mm -hmm. first time in nashville fairgrounds wow okay i raced at nashville super speedway but not the smaller track Oh, okay. But I was just talking like downtown Nashville, you know? Oh, like, Nashville. Uh, yeah. I wasn't, wasn't very impressed. What? Really? Uh-uh. No, I always talk about how everyone loves like downtown Nashville. And I went and it was just like, well, also I'm 19 years old. There's nothing for me to do down there. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, but I, so that could change, uh, you know, in a couple of years, but you just see, you just weren't, you weren't feeling the country music or, or it just what? I feel like it wasn't even that country. Like I feel like I going down there, it was a lot of like I swear I heard more rap music than like country music, which I love rap music. <laughs> so <laughs> right. I guess that's good. But like I just felt like it was so overcrowded. Yeah, it definitely is that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well that I, that's just like I, I rarely ever heard somebody say that they're like not that impressed with Nashville. So Yeah, I know. I just yeah. I don't know, it wasn't my thing. I'm not like for crowded towns. Okay. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah, that's 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 so totally cool. What what's who's your uh, who's your artist? Who's your rap artist that you like? Uh, top, top it's, three. it's very broad. I'm more of a like a nineties rap. Yeah. Like love Tupac, Snoop Dogg, um Eminem really good is really good. Uh so you're Tupac over Biggie, you're West Coast over over East Coast. Biggie's pretty good though, but like it's I don't know, it's I, I have a very broad selection, but I'd say mostly all 90s rap. Nice. Hell yeah. yeah. I actually, 
um, I'm interviewing you, so this shouldn't be about me, but since you said you're such a big oh. fan, I actually danced with my mom to Dear Mama uh, on my wedding day. That was our song. Really? Yeah, That's was, cool. That That's really song. cool. Yeah, so <laughs> definitely, feel you, definitely feel you on the Tupac there. Yeah. For sure. Do you think he's still alive? Do you think there's any... Anybody? Okay, okay, I'm a big conspiracy person. Big conspiracy right. person. So, like, like, you know the Michael Jackson, like, his his conspiracy of like oh like him walking out of the van and stuff like there's videos that, of it yeah so that's what like i'm like i don't know i huh. i'm a big like i'm just like a, i'm a conspiracy person like i love watching all conspiracies and seeing like if it's true or not what's going on but i don't know about the tupac one i feel like yeah. there's too many people around too many witnesses to, for it to be fake yeah i know I, I i would agree with you on that one although the michael jackson one you brought up Mm -hmm. I found myself on that side of TikTok every now I and then. I did, yeah, me too. And <laughs> and I'm kind of like, researching. that did look like I'm a little bit, I don't know, you know, so I can get, I, I feel like I can get down with the conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what else do I got for you? I got some notes. So I would, you, you, your first race in SRX back in June, you came in second to Tony Stewart, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was Tony Stewart like your guy growing up is that your your favorite driver or who was your favorite I've driver? always looked up to Tony Stewart I think as a person I just I really like his personality um he was an amazing race car driver and he still is and his whole dirt background I come from dirt racing a different type of dirt racing but still dirt racing in general so I have a lot of respect for him and I always thought that he had like a really uh, he seems like he has a very hard personality if you don't know him and getting to know him he was such a nice guy, so helpful, always like complimented me on when I did something right on the track and always was helping me out at the racetrack. And I was like, wow, he is actually a really good guy. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it's got to be surreal to be mm -hmm. out there, you know, bumping with those guys. That's such it's a, crazy. That's it's awesome. crazy to be like racing door to door with Bill Elliott. Like yeah. that guy's a legend. Like he's been racing forever. And like walking out to driver intros, I was just walking, chatting with him. And fans are Bill, 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 Bill. And I was like, wow, Mr. Popular. And he's like, well, I've been doing it for 45 years. I'm like, yeah, true. <laughs> right, yeah. And you're like, I have like a million followers on Instagram. And he's probably like, what the hell is Instagram? I haven't been doing it for 45 years, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's, uh, that, 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 that's awesome. So I know, uh, you know, last week at Slinger was – you know, crazy race, and, and I got to get into that, all the Paul Tracy stuff coming up. But, but – I, before we get into that, I am uh, based in Indianapolis. That's where I'm from. That's where I live right now. So Indianapolis Motor Speedway, you know, that the shelf behind me right there, I don't know if you can see, like that is just like ingrained. Into oh, yeah, I understand. Have you, have you been to IMS? What are your thoughts? I haven't actually, no. Oh, wow. I haven't been there yet. We got to get you out. Uh -huh. I want to go for sure, but it's always like, I'm always busy when the kind of Indy 500 is going on and like, that's not really my scene, mm -hmm. IndyCar racing. Like, I don't really know anyone over there to just, like, pick up the phone. I do I do now, a few people now, but, like, not anyone to pick up the phone and be like, hey, like, do you have any extra passes or something like that, like pit passes? I mean, the race against Marco Andretti, I, I, I think an Andretti has yeah. to <laughs> Right. I think now, I feel like with the SRX series, it started a bunch of new relationships and new connections for me. And it's just, it's been awesome. Like, hearing everyone's stories, it's hilarious. Yeah, I saw in the latest blog that you, that you posted from Slinger, you're like, you and Elio were hanging out all the time. I was like, nice. Yeah, I think we're like best friends now. <laughs> him, <laughs> like, he's even like, he is funny. Like, all the conversations he was having and the stories he was telling. I swear, we sat in like the lounge area for three to four hours just telling stories and dying laughing. It was hilarious. Wow, that's awesome. That, yeah. yeah. Elio, I mean, legend, right? Four yeah, time, four time sure. winner. So, um, any, any, any chance, you know, maybe 10 years from now, 15 years from now, you know, you, you, you could see yourself racing in the Indianapolis 500, any crossover going on? I know a lot of racers, they, they cross over different ways. Could I mean, happen? I would love, I would love to test an Indy car, but I think when it comes to Indy car racing, I didn't grow up, uh, racing open wheels and different things like that. So I, that's just not my thing. And I don't want to try something that I know is not my thing when it's that dangerous. Any car racing is very dangerous. And that's something like, I don't want a chance if I, if I get nothing really out of it. I mean, it'd be cool by all means to drive an Indy car, but I, I'm, I think I must stick to the full body stock cars right now. <laughs> Maybe it'll change down the road. 
yeah, no, I mean, it seems to be working out pretty well for you so far. So I, uh, I, I don't blame you. All right. Talked about it earlier. It's been all the rage since Saturday. I got I got to know since I got here. Run us through Paul Tracy. What happened on the track? What happened afterwards with you and Paul Tracy? I mean, I'll, okay, I'll start from the beginning. I mean, we, we were always cool. Like, I talked to him, like, always had conversation. Nothing ever wrong. And then we go race and stuff, and I feel like a lot of people know Paul's history in the SRX series. It kind of – it came up on the screen that he's been involved in an incident every race. So, like, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, and – I was just running my race and he ends up, so I originally thought Ernie hit me when um, he got into Ernie and Ern, the only reason Ernie saved it is because Ernie got into me. He wrecked, he hit Ernie hard enough he should have wrecked, but I was on the outside of Ernie, so it kind of caught him, mm -hmm. but then it got me all jacked up. So we both almost wrecked and then I thought Ernie hit me. So I went up and I was like, with Ernie, kind of mad at Ernie, but turns out it wasn't him. I, and then my crew chief came on the radio and was like, hey, it's not Ernie. I was like, all right, no problem. All good. And so all of a sudden I get behind Paul since he hit both of us out of the way trying to wreck us. And so we came back um, and I'm trying to get by him in. I don't, like, we don't have spotters in the SRX series. So you really have to watch your mirrors and you're accountable for watching your mirrors. And that's something that I feel like I'm decent at watching my mirrors because of stock racing. You're constantly driving out of your mirror. Um, and so I keep I'm on the inside of him every time. Chop my nose, chop my nose. And I'm like, at the point where I'm like, dude. Wait, when you say chop my nose, because I've seen huh? it on your Instagram, okay. go through the casual race fan, what, is, what does that mean? So say like you're coming into a corner. Here's me, here's Paul. Say we're like this, and here's the bottom of the corner, and I'm on the bottom, and he just turns down. It goes like this, and it just takes your nose around. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Go ahead. So he did that numerous times, numerous, numerous times. And I was like, he's not going to give me the inside when I'm at his door like that. He's just not going to give it to me. And so I was like, you know what? I'm not. And every time I checked up, I checked up for him because I didn't want, I wasn't trying to wreck him. That's not my intention to go out there and just wreck people for no reason. And so coming down the last couple laps, I was like, I got to go. I'm getting held up. Like, I want a chance to get on the podium. I'm not going to just sit here and just go slower because I don't want to get in a collision or an incident. And so I go down there and I actually had the inside on him, the corner before, and he hits me down and um, he tries to at least. And I just stuck it in. I was like, you know, I'm not moving this time. I'm not checking up. That was a corner before I got to run off the corner because he came down and hit me and I didn't check up. And so I got to run on his inside. I was my, I looked at the video. My nose was at his, or his uh, name at his door. I was at his door. <clears throat> and so Coming down to the corner, he goes down. I knew he was going to try to chop my nose again. I was like, I knew exactly what was going to happen. And in my head, I was like, hopefully he just bounces off and doesn't wreck. But if he wrecks, that's not my fault. I'm holding my line on the bottom. Yeah. So he got all spun out because when you – and I know he's not a stock car racer, and that's what I do. Just the same way if I went to IndyCar, I wouldn't understand how wrecks happen in IndyCar. So when you go down and chop someone's nose like that, it gets the person on the inside loose also. So you have to gather it up. So when he saw me on the inside hits me, as soon as he hits me, you see me straighten the wheel out because I'm trying to save it because it got me loose. I'm trying to gather it up real quick because yeah. once again, he chopped my nose down and he took that as, oh no, look, she turned right into me. You know how hard it is to turn a stock car right? <laughs> it's very hard because they're built to turn left. Right. And so I'm not going down there at Slinger turning right. I can tell you that and I can assure you that. So I'm just trying to straighten the wheel, trying to gather it up because it dropped my nose. And so then he gets all spun out about that. And I'm like, whatever, not a big deal. Like he's been involved in, like he had to have seen that coming. I didn't think it was a big deal. And so all of a sudden after the race, everyone's all pumped. Like even his like mechanics were coming up to me and be like, dude, that wasn't your fault. Like he did that to himself. <clears throat> and so I was like, all right, whatever. Like, I'll get, like, I was happy you finished fourth. Um, me and Tony were battling for um, a podium spot at the end. I was super pumped about that. And then we go to, I go back to my, um, like, our camper area. And it, there's two campers. And so half the drivers in one, half the drivers in the other. And Paul was in uh, the hauler that I was in. And so I'm going, and I go in the lounge, okay? I'm going to get changed. And my boyfriend's down. 
uh, in like the main area and I while I'm changing in like the room area. And so all of a sudden I hear my boyfriend start arguing and I'm like, oh my God, he just walked in. <laughs> and so he starts like complaining to my boyfriend and my boyfriend's like, I hold the camera. What do you want me to do? Like, what? And he's like, oh, that's not cool, dude. And like, dude. And so he starts arguing with him. So I'm trying to get changed real quick so I can walk out there. And I was like, I walked out there. I tried to be super nice, super nice. After hearing what he was saying and arguing with my boyfriend about and so I walked down there. I was like, hey, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to take you out, but I'm not going to check up for you chopping my nose. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not, but I'm not just going to sit here and just let you do that. Yeah. Like, I wasn't trying to go into that corner and take you out. You're the one that did that to yourself. So how do you respond to that? So he starts arguing again and trying to prove his point. And it just, we just keep going at it. And like, hey, I was like, hey, he's like, he first said, after I said all that stuff, he was like, all right, fine. Well, when I just go down the inside of someone in the corner, I'll just turn right and take them out. And just talking like all that stuff. And so my boyfriend says, hey, well, first of all, the person in the upper groove is going to hold their line. So you won't even have to do that. And so it just, he's like, whatever, it storms out. And then he gets on social media and so I, so he, he, he then followed up on social media after you guys had already talked. So, we already talked. Like we, wow. he's the one that stormed out of there because he couldn't keep probing his point because I already said what I needed to say. Mm. So wow. he's getting on social media, trying to be this big hero over here, trying to prove his point. And I don't under, I didn't understand because he kept posting stuff and people were taking my side and I wasn't even trying to make it sides. Like I didn't post anything about it. I, he kept tagging me in Instagram stories and at some point I officially was like, I'm done with this. So I added one of the Instagram stories back explaining my side. So people like weren't trying to come after me over something that they didn't know about. Right. And that was it. I left at that. I just explained my side, never bashed him or anything like that. Just explained what happened, broke down the scenario. And so he goes on this long rant on social media. I'm pretty sure he still is. <laughs> I, I probably check my phone right now. I'm probably going to get Paul Tracy mentioned you in their story. And so at some point, I'm not going to waste my time and post stuff about something that's now irrelevant. And as so, as someone's got to be the bigger person. Someone's got to be the man in the argument. And it's obviously going to have to be me. So now I'm moving forward to Nashville this weekend. Last race of the SRX series this year. Are, 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 you, are you concerned? Or are you going to be watching over your back? Are you going to be trying to go after him as well? I mean, what, 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 how are you feeling about that going into Nashville? Going to Nashville, I'm doing my own thing. I'm going out there. I'm racing my race. I'm going to get try to get the best finish I can. I I don't hold grudges like that. And what happened last race ends last race. And it's been like that my whole career. You don't go and just tip for tat every single race. It's not how it works. So doing that wastes a lot of time and a lot of money. There's a lot of money involved in racing to do that stuff. And a lot of people's time wasted. So that's not something that I do and not something I'm about. Uh, time is very valuable. And so I'm going to go out there. I'm going to go race my race. I'm going to try to do the best I can. If he wants to play childish games and bring up stuff that should have been let go the day after the race, he can do that. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to be the one looking stupid. Okay. So let's say though, I, I think that's an, an admirable approach going into the race, but then let's say, you know, you're, you're doling it out. It's lap 50, you know, and then, and then PT gives you a side bump. Like hey, you're going to be able to, you know, have the the calm and the heat of the moment or are you gonna is that gonna change a little bit i mean if he i'm the type of person if you start something i'm gonna finish it. so don't if you don't want anything to start don't start it i'm not gonna start it you don't have to start it but if you start something i'm not gonna let people walk all over me Got i'm gonna stand up for myself and i'm willing to show that i'm not a person to be walked over that's gonna be tough i mean you know 19 years old your kid i mean you're you're female <laughs> yeah, yeah you, gotta, you gotta put your foot down somewhere right yeah and i know i may not be the most big brawly person but i'm still gonna stand up for myself 250 pound paul tracy does not intimidate me like i'm gonna go out there i'm gonna go race my race and i'm gonna do my job because that's what i'm here to do i'm not here to pick fights with older men like i'm that's all i'm trying to do. got it well Haley, I didn't mean to uh, to to get you too worked up there on a sour note or anything. You're you're kicking ass. Uh, looking forward to this weekend in Nashville, no doubt. And uh, I appreciate you hanging out for a little bit. Best of luck this weekend. All right. 
Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. And early happy birthday to you as well. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Got you. It. <laughs>